quick shot and the guys at the analysis desk to see their opinions. Thank you very much, D-Man. The quick shot here with the freak and the rest of the analysts on the desk. We're going to talk a little bit now while we wait for SKT and Lemon Dogs to actually just sort out some of those technical issues. And, uh, I want to pick up from where D-Man and Jat left off, talking about 3.11. They've already highlighted, uh, you know, the Trinity Force changes. And, and uh, as an AD carry and a support, our analyst bottom lane, uh, talk me through Wild Turtles, Corky, and, and how much more Trinity Force champions we're going to be seeing this tournament. Yeah, so definitely I think Corky's going to be... Early pick, early ban, every game. He's really, really strong right now. He was, he was always strong, actually. I think Kopp was like the first North American player to pick him up before the Trinity Force buffs. And people realized, like, wow, Corky is actually really strong. And now he's just so top tier bottom lane. He has almost no losing matchups except for like a few like Graves. And my th problem with it is that people are going to go into Ezreal a lot with Trinity Force, which I personally don't like. I personally like Blue Build Ezreal, but, you know, that's another thing. As a support player, agree or disagree? Crap, I huh? played quite a few games against Corkies in the, the European solo queue, and it's really, even once they get that phage, it's, it throws you off your game once they get that con continuously speed ups after every spell. And it's, it's, it's really, really hard to play against that. Uh, you have to get used to it, and it just has a really early ramp up time, and especially Korean teams will be able to abuse that. Yeah, I think actually the Trinity Force top laners actually have a really big impact as well because you're seeing Jackson, Aurelia, and these types show back up into the scene. A, a, a top lane that was for the most part, dominated by guys like Shen and Zach and Nasus and Elise, who are either tanks or casters. Yeah, and I, you know, with the going along with this too, we've seen that transition. Now, the Korean qualifiers for this third place seed that SK Telecom played in, they started to adapt that style because they were on 310A at the time. And so we started seeing Impact play some more Jax and other carry top laners already starting to move away from that meta and pick up the new Trinity Force, or new, I should say, old Trinity Force yeah. Bruiser <laughs> tops. It's back. And, and to go off of that, like, uh, as an AD carry player, the champions that top lane play uh, that use Trinity Force, like Aurelia and Jax, those are champions that are really good against, like, Caitlyn and Varus. And so you're going to see, like, it snowball more where Corky and Ezreal are actually really good against other Trinity Force users. So the AD carries that use Trinity Force are good against Trinity Force top laners. So it just kind of builds upon itself a lot. So let, let's step back a little bit. We've discussed the top and the, and the duo lane. How, does this affect the jungle or the mid lane at all? You know, we, we've seen this heavy assassin sort of meta game uh, in play right now. Do the changes in 3.10, 3.11 affect the mid or, or your jungle at all? I think it will affect the, the jungle in one way that certain champions who were really early picks in both viable positions, uh, some teams were still picking jungle Shen early for the possibility to have that, or Zach really early, and then just swap him out and put him in the jungle. I think pick patterns are definitely going to change with these item rotations, and then I, I can see a lot more emphasis just getting Zed early. Every team's going to want Zed this patch. What, what makes Zed still so good that over all the, the, the current patches, he's still you know, relevant? He seems to bring out the best in, like the players can do so much with Zed. We've seen Faker 30% HP, come at me with another Zed, well, no problem. I'll just QSS your ulti, jump away, jump back in, jump away again. It, it's such a, such a versatile champion with which you can do so much, especially in an assassin-based mid lane meta game. I, I feel Zed's going to have so much impact. One thing I'm actually surprised about with the sort of proliferation of Zed is that we're not seeing as many champions who are specifically good against Zed. Guys like, uh, for example, Lissandra, who can basically self-ult and, and at least have some impact in the fight, right? Like, she can put the Frozen team out, do a bunch of stuff, or just target stun the Zed, and then your team can kind of group up on that. Fiddlesticks, three second fear. Unless Zed rushes a QSS, he's gonna have a really hard time doing anything in a fight. I, I'm surprised people aren't killing Zed quickly in fights more. Well, and to, to run with that too, there have been a lot of theories about are we gonna see Kale in this tournament because of the power of yeah. Zed? But I think mostly we're just going to see Zed bans, frankly. <laughs> well, I, I wanna step back now because if there was ever a time to pull out a new champion, a new composition, pull out something that's maybe a little off the wall from the current meta, now is the time to do it, right? Talking about Kale, Kale you know, can do very well against the likes of your Zed. What other kinds of champions could we be seeing? Uh, very, very quickly, Crep, I throw that out there. I'm waiting for Soraka. Armor <laughs> buff, silence, flash bananas. We'll I'm see. hoping. We'll, we'll have to see if it works out. I am hearing that apparently the players are just about ready. So let's actually throw it back over to Demon and Jet for Champion Select.